mathematical snack started for us as a bit of an accident. Um, I appreciated that the children were innately mathematical, but when put in a structured situation, didn't necessarily demonstrate those skills. However, at snack time, in a purely practical way, the children had an innate sense of solving problems and wanted to do so by helping one another. So I started very basically with one-to-one -one correspondence and set up a snack tray that had a problem to solve within it. In that way, the children could help one another, hand out cups and pieces of fruit, and if there was a problem, if somebody didn't have one, then they worked together to solve the problem. I could sit back and see the mathematical thinking happening in action so that therefore I had a better understanding of which children in my setting had a deeper understanding of solving mathematical problems. When we undertake a sabotage snack activity in nursery, the adult, once the problem has been set, allows the children to have time to work together and talk through the problem in order to find a solution. The children very quickly become accustomed to working out what elements of the problem they need to know in order to solve the problem. For example, one of my young men, when he sees the tray coming towards the table, automatically starts counting the children around the table because he knows that's an important piece of information. In order to solve the problem, he knows he needs to know how many of his friends are sat with him. The children are fantastic at working together to solve their problems and very often the adult can encourage the children to find more than one solution to any given problem and that's really interesting as a practitioner to see just how the children can solve problems in a multiple manner of ways. The children in nursery show their depth of mathematical understanding as they move through the selection of trays that they are presented. We move from one-to-one -one correspondence to sharing, to sorting, to problem solving in multiple ways. For example, it's quite tricky to share three apples between four children when the apples are whole. You then suddenly get into fractions and need to separate and all of the lovely language that comes out at that point is really lovely to hear. There have been many benefits for mathematical snack in nursery. Not only the children having the opportunity to show their mathematical learning on a daily basis and work together to solve the problems, but also all of the characteristics of effective learning that come from it. For example, confidence, raised self-esteem, working together, sharing, turn-taking, supporting friends who are perhaps not working at a mathematical depth that you are, helping them solve the problems for themselves and also encouraging with careful questioning. I have some children in nursery that support their less able peers and model language and solutions and problem solving and in that way it's not that the teacher's telling you what to do, it's that actually your friends are helping you and we see over time that then our less confident children become more confident and they don't even know they're doing it. The key features of mathematical snack time are consistency, in that the children are presented with their challenges in the same way. The children then become quickly acquainted with the sort of knowledge that they need and the sort of information they need to glean in how to solve the problem. The problems should go through on a graduated basis, starting with one-to-one -one correspondence at its simplest level and building all the way through to partitioning and fractions. From the leaflet that comes alongside this video, you will see that there are a huge range of mathematical snack time problems, including number, length, size, shape, sorting, comparison, data handling. When you think about it, you can make mathematical snack do anything you want it to. Have a go, it's really good.